Okay. Uh, this is six scale. It's June 16th, 2022. I'll share the link to the notes in the chat. All right. And uh, please add yourself as an attendee. Okay. Um, first thing, uh, so Marcelo, we, I, I've, um, yeah, this is I'm actually good. I want to review these. So first is which one? The QPS. Yeah. So this one, um, this experiment, Marcelo, um, yeah, I mean, why don't you talk through, do like a little high level overview and then we can have a discussion on it. Sorry, what was the question? Well, I say, why, why don't you do a, a high level overview of the PR oh, yes. and and then um, we can have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, well, the experiment is to test the VM, uh, uh, you know, uh, creation latency. It's uh, the, the VM object, it's, which well it's the object to start and you know stop you know the vmi and i'm following the whole uh, workflow so i create the vm object and the vm object will automatically create the vmi object then of course the vmi creates the pod so um and uh, the focus here is it's in the vm creation time uh it's interesting because i I wasn't seeing uh, this, you know, huge latency in the VMI creation time. This happens to in the VM creation time. So, um, and uh, and uh, yeah. So that's that's the basically the exper the experiment, and the experiment it's actually in a medium sized cluster, or maybe can be considered small. I don't know. It has twelve worker nodes and three master nodes. And I'm creating, you know, uh, 1,200 uh, VMs. I'm also doing another experiments in the in the report there that is to creating more than 2,000 VMs. Um, okay. And um, and it's which means it's 100 VMs per node and then 200 VMs per node. So and the the experiment I'm focusing, I try to, I change actually the you know, the curves per second and burst of other components, but the one that makes uh, more difference is the virtual controller. So the PR is focusing on the virtual controller, especially because it's to, you know, narrow down the discussion. So I'm changing the, the, the uh, virtual controller uh, curves per second and burst from the default configuration, which is 2030. And then I increase that to 100 and uh, 200 and then 400 cars per second to see how, how it impacts the performance. Uh, especially, you know, uh, because I was seeing, you know, some huge, you know, uh, uh, VM, VM uh, creation time for uh, when was creating 1000 VMs at the same time. And like 22 minutes, you know, uh, which not acceptable uh, for this, okay. And uh, and then here, it's to say so the 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 latency and the impact also in the throughput. So how many VMs is being created per time? So it turns out that maybe not maybe, but one of the reason that it's uh, takes in, uh, a lot of time also to uh, create the VMs. Okay, so there are two things here: is the time to create the whole batch, for example, 1,000, how long it takes to create 1,000, and then the each VM uh, time. And, uh, and then I'm also, I'm also analyzing this here. So of course, to create, since it, to create one VM, it's very slow to create like, a, if we're considering all the total amount of VMs being created, uh, it's also very big in the first scenario, the default one. It's, this is the default configuration, okay? And, and then it turns out that with the current, you know, um, uh, configuration, burst configuration, it can create only one VM per second. So in, uh, it's, there is a bottleneck. So it's, it's because the VM, the, it's not the VMI, okay? So it's the VM, controller, mm -hmm. it's not being able to do too many requests. So just to comment, this query, you know, 20 queries per second here, it's shared 
in between all the controllers in the virtual controller. So internally in the virtual controller, it has the VM, VMI, uh, you know, node, and um, uh, I don't remember now what I list there. So there are many other, uh, you know, uh, queues. Uh, that means different controllers controlling different things, and all of them share the same pairs per second configuration. Uh, mm -hmm. Another option could be maybe sep have separate cars per second for each of them. Uh, and then we have more control of that, but the way that it's implemented now, it's something that shared between everything, which something it's internal to the virtual controller. Yeah, it's here. So you can see highlighted here, all the controllers, you know, evacuation. So it will also impact like a migration that, you know, at some point. So when I increase that, I put, you know, for the maximum, of course, uh, this PR, after some discussion, I'm not going to increase to the maximum cars per second that I tried uh, because some concerns. I, I'm going to get a middle ground with something in the middle of that. Uh, but with the maximum cars per second that I test, 400 and 600 for burst, I could get up to 17 VMs being created at the same time. And note that my test I configure it to create 20 per second. So even though I increase, you know, very high curves per second, I couldn't get 20 VMs uh, per second. So it, it, it's the, there is some limit somewhere else. And um, yeah, and, uh, and then the question here was, okay, so what happens if I increase that? And isn't it in the cluster? So we, to understand that, we need to analyze first the number of requests that it's been generated, and the, also the number of in-flight requests, the current request that is being, it means the current request that is being processed in the VIRT API. Because this in-flight request is the most important one, because it takes, let's assume, for example, it's not happening, okay? But we need to understand that. Let's assume a scenario that kubevirt it's overloading the virt api getting all the requests that virt the uh, sorry api server getting all the requests that the, the api server could get and then other controllers could not access that i know that we can have priority and fairness openshift has it by default kubernetes it's uh you know it's still i think alpha or beta but uh it will have priority and fairness this is something that we will improve in the future because it's not there yet. But the point we need to understand, how is Kubevirt increasing this, overloading the, the API server? It turns out that the current requests that are being processed per second, it's only 40. And the default uh, API, uh, maximum in-flight requests in the API server, it's 500. So just to understand what does it mean? It means when we see here, you know, the, the API request total, then we see 800 here, isn't it? For example, the maximum scenario. It means that it started, you know, 800 requests and it's waiting for 800 requests. So, and some of requests takes more than one second. And it means that the occupancy, you know, of in here, it will be more than 100 seconds. Uh, but the, the number of requests that are being processed at the same time in the, in the API server, it's only 40, which means we are not getting all the, the, the API server still has a lot of room to, uh, you know, to reply for requests because some of requests here takes a lot of time. That's the point. And, and I'm running a system that has, you know, it's very powerful CPUs, uh, very fast, you know, uh, machine uh, with any uh, SSDs. So uh, in the the other scenarios means in slower cluster, it will take even, you know, more time to maybe process some uh, list operation or a request like that. And then we'll take our post operation because the post, for example, 
create a GPU, sorry, create a VM, it goes through a lot of process and then it takes time to process that. So, um, and that's what's happening here. So um, it's, uh, I'm just saying that all these analysis just say we are, even though we increase that, we see an increase in the number of requests, the API server in a, is a, in a safe margin, okay? Um, that's, that's the explanation of these two figures. And then, then the other question is, okay, so what's the impact in this resource utilization? And, and here is the virtual controller. Of course, it's increased uh, the resource utilization from few, you know, uh, CPU utilization to uh, at least one uh, or, uh, you know, one and a half core in the system. Um, it's, it has uh, some, uh, you know, the CPU has some high frequency. Okay, it's a powerful CPU, but I wouldn't expect to take like a more than uh, two CPUs. And especially because we are going to the scenario that here that took only, uh, you know, 100% uh, here, it means one, one CPU. So it's the virtual controller will be using only one full CPU which I'm considering also to be okay because it's an extreme scenario that we create 1000 VM and we enable it to scale, you know, in a reasonable uh, throughput and perform and latency. Um, and the other, the other thing here is to show the impact in the work queue. We have some PRs before, some discussion, especially in the beginning of the six scale about the performance of the work queue. And we were not understanding. We have a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, discussion to maybe to create trace, to understand that better. And turns out that when I increase the queries per second with the high value here, it's definitely improved a lot the work queue. So the, the issue that, uh, a guy from NVIDIA uh, presented like a long time ago that some keys were processing very slow in the virtual controller. And he was actually also, you know, uh, proposing some, uh, another approach to bypass work queue, something like that. It turns out that only increasing the cars per second and burst, it's, uh, you know, uh, eliminate uh, the problem here. So we can see the longest running process drops to less than one second here, you know, and and very few of them, you know, considering the, uh, the longest running process here in the first scenario, the default one, we have a lot of them that it takes six seconds, you know, to process a key, which yeah. is very slow. And then when we go to the best scenario here, uh, well, at least the scenario that I, the maximum scenario that I test, it drops a lot. So I would say that we have no work queue issue here anymore. Uh, it's doing that. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you, did you, do you see like, uh, I wonder if you see this in the traces. Uh, you should be, uh, the, the threshold I have is one second in the traces by default. It would be interesting to see what you, what it also shows in the logs, because I understand this metric and what you're showing here, but I, I'd be curious to see because um, though the metric is, granular and enough that like we should be able to see exactly where in the, the work queue like this is being slowed down if it's like a specific uh call we're making um it would be good to find this um yeah, yeah I because i mean i guess like my yeah I sorry still have, yeah i still have the system maybe i think i can okay. run uh it on again let, let me check and i didn't get okay. the logs so I, I will get the logs of every components okay. Okay, that would be a really, really helpful experiment just to see like, yeah, I mean, I would like to get a better picture of like what this is. And, and this is kind of what I was like, kind of my comments were centered on Marcelo. It's like, this is really interesting. There's a lot of really good data. And like you said, like we, we like in NVIDIA, we've done like some experiment like this and we saw that QPS was like the biggest influencer on improving performance. And the thing, but the thing that's really interesting to me is like, um, at least my takeaway with this is that when, um, uh, when you talked about like, okay, so like, you know, 800 requests uh, or whatever, 500 in-flight requests, whatever, like it's, it's, 
well, you know, I'm trying to like picture in my mind, like what is like the what should Qvert's footprint be in in the in your Kubernetes cluster? Like, should it be should it take up like half? Should it be like be able to take up half of the API service requests, or should it be lower? Like, you know, what is like, you know, what's our what's our right the right approach? Like, what should, what should be like the right way we look at this? It's very possible that the defaults for Qvert should should be like, hey, like we should need to take up half the API request, you know, for the API server. But I'm I'm wondering if we, it could be lower. Like I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing like if like because the data you're pointing out here is actually like to me it seems like you you're you're hitting some some bugs. Like the bug isn't necessarily like I agree that the QPS burst is probably a little low as the default, but whatever it is, ten or twenty, it probably should be higher. But I, um, but it's also when you go to the high end. It um, and the way that it affects the effects it has, like how much important improvements in performance, makes me think that maybe we're just making too many requests. Like it just seems like, seems like we're we're a little too active with the API server. Like it seems like we maybe I, I'm wondering if like you know if there's a way we like we can end up with the same performance at around 100 or less than 100 or something because that seems to be like maybe where like you know what what one eighth of what the the API server is maybe like what the right footprint is or something. I don't know. I mean, what what, what do people think? To me, it just sounds like it just seems like we're using a lot, like uh, like four hundred. Because you know, like the thing is, this argument can go on forever, right? We could say, why not six hundred? Why not eight hundred? You know, why don't we just use the whole? Like, we don't want people to do that. Like, we want we don't want people to have to say like, oh, I'm just increasing the QPS and burst forever. You know, and and then also not get my performance that I need. We don't want that. We want to, you know, we want to reduce it as as much as possible. And that's like you're exposed to like a lot of. I think you exposed probably multiple bugs here. The like the number of put requests per second. These things like seem very high. And maybe we can lower them. And then um, yeah, if, if if you see oh let, let's first you know, one. I want to discuss like two things before. Sure. So, uh, can can you roll up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just just to comment about yeah the queries per second. You know when we are seeing the five hundred, this the five hundred means what's the amount of? No, you, you can go here to the figure bef yeah below, the one yeah that the green one yeah. So here is the here is the number of requests that it's in the API server the real one. That it's being processed at the time. So the API server has this maximum in-flight request that it's the default 500. Some people increase that for very huge clusters, but the default one is 500. And you know, even though after increasing the queries per second, we can see here that it didn't impact too much the API server. So the API server were still processing you know, uh, uh, around 30 requests per second. But what means that we go to the five, the 800 there that we're showing, it means we restarted more requests. You know, the APIs, for example, the components were able to request more things to the API server. However, some of these requests are waiting, are pending, you know, because they are processing somewhere else. And then uh, it's it's not being uh, you know uh, the in-flight request that it means it was uh, replying the request you know uh, it's it means we are not overloading we are not impacting you know the virt API server in a in a bad way it's it's still safe to increase to this number that that's what I'm, I'm describing it here and you're right we can uh, improve. Uh, you know, kubevert based on this the, the request. Um, if if it was roll down, I replied David quite uh, very in the end. Yeah, yeah here. So David actually asked the same thing that you mentioned. What's the number of requests per VM, more or less like that? And okay, I don't have it like specifically per VM. Um, Especially because we can, uh, as you mentioned, so I didn't remove all the, to, to get the exactly number that it's been doing, 
maybe we need to get like uh, remove all the you know curves per second restrictions and then it will do the maximum that kubvert will need and then we can understand but i think we are close to the to the maybe we are close to the limit there um for the the last scenario in any case it was able to create you know it requested you know 22000 uh put requests so since we cre I created you know more or less one, one thousand two hundred you know uh, VMs, it means you know there is some rounding here in in Prometheus. So but it will be approximately twelve you know nineteen put requests for the virtual controller, six posts for patch and very few get. So and considering that when we create a VM object. It, the VM, you know, do some, uh, you know, request to create the VMI, it's request, then request to create the pods. I see that 19 put maybe a little bit high, but it's still fine. I don't know. We can, we can get this, you know, uh, impression from uh, more folks about that, you know, what they think about. I, I don't know. I've, I think that maybe 19 is high, but it's doing a lot of things to create a VM. Uh, I, we can maybe go again. So you have the, created this uh, six, six, uh, sequence diagram for creating VMI, isn't it? Uh, or yeah. a VM. I don't remember if it's a VM or only it's VMI. A, it's a VMI. Yeah, it's a VMI. It been, maybe it would be nice to you know, expand it to the VM and... Uh, and then we can, you know, try to to figure out, you know, where the where the put, you know, and post uh, actually the put requests are coming from. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's VMI only. Yeah, we could. Yeah, it's VMI only. Yeah, or maybe. Yeah, or maybe create another one for VM. You know. Yeah, we can do, we could do another one. Yeah. I think uh, what's interesting, so I was, um, you know, uh, with, with what you have, like 19, that's it's interesting. I like, it does, like I was saying, like maybe it is a sensible number, maybe you know, whatever, however many amount is a sensible, sensible number. I mean, I think like um, that you're right that like, you know, your graph about the API server and the way it's be able to handle it. Like in theory, right, we could always, we could always increase API servers, we could always increase resources. You know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, and and eventually we'll be, we could serve the load. I think it. I think it's totally possible. It's totally reasonable. Yeah, it's just sort of the question of like, you know, what's the right default? I think is you know one important question. Um, you know, what is our default workload? You know, what what should the right default be? Um, and then in the case of like your example, like if your example is sort of outside of like what the average person is doing, well, we need to then document it. Like we need to we need to like you know, your experiment highlights the importance of how you can achieve performance because if you and your if someone comes along with your exact use case, you know, like like you're showing here, they're not going to achieve nearly the amount of performance that they should be. And so these are kind of this is that whole other area where like the SLO is document where we should spend a bunch of time um, finding these things and 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 documenting them. So like yeah. two things like finding that default and documenting. And then and then the, the third thing I'd say is like um, maybe we can you know, reduce some of this, stuff, maybe, I mean, I think like the experiment we did a long time ago was trying to skip things in the work view. Maybe the th the right thing to do is instead of skipping things in the work queue, maybe it's to like, maybe it's to skip like, or not do put requests immediately or something. Maybe it's to combine them. Maybe it's to skip put requests. You know, maybe that's, you know, sort of the same idea, just, you know, just a little nuance. Like maybe it's, um, and so instead of looking at it as like, you know, um, you know, skipping steps, let's just, Maybe we can reduce these because it would be interesting to see. Like, this could be easy to tell. If we were to reduce this value by one, right, this value should go down significantly in your experiment. And we should see pretty quickly, you know, these numbers should decline. Like, and, and we can, we should be able to easily measure like the performance just with one less put request. So it would be an interesting experiment because of how impactful just one request or even two or three could be. On the, like your on your overall performance, so that would be really interesting to see because if we because even even if we were to scrap just one, 
of those requests, it would, I would, I think it would be incredibly valuable, probably even like, you know, 20 to 30 QPS uh, of value just by, you know, maybe reducing one of these. So that would be, I th say the third thing that we could do. Yeah. So let me share my screen very quickly here that I want to show. Okay. Mm. Can you, can you see that? Maybe it's yeah. the next two is more. And uh, if we see here, you know, this, the metric from the work, work queue retry rate, we can see here that there are a lot of retries. So for example, if we go to the scenario that the maximum scenario, okay, we have like a different, uh, I have different configurations here, but considering this one, uh, this one here, So it the virtual controller, for example, node, virtual controller node, which it's I, I would I was not expecting this work queue to be like that. It was 80 operations per second for the retry rate. So that it was there is probably definitely a bug in the virtual controller node. It shouldn't be retrying to process a queue a key that that much, isn't it? Sorry, I don't understand. Can you say it again? Yeah, so we have this here, work queue retry uh, rate. It means a key was not processed and then it retry to process this key again. You know, some retry is expected, but the virtual controller node uh, which means it's getting information from the node. It's having some uh, problem here. For example, it was eight requests per second. It, it was retrying the scheme too many times, you know, too high. For example, when we increase the curves per second, it was retrying the key, you know, a lot. Um, I think definitely here is something that we can improve, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it it shouldn't it shouldn't be processing or retrying this key too that that much. It's too many. Eight times. I wonder eight. if the tracing. Will, I wonder if the tracing will pick this up, or if it if it doesn't, we might maybe have something we can do to improve it. Because I would I would really be interesting to see the tracing on this. Like you talked about earlier, like the um, the amount of time spent in the work queue. Maybe it's the retries that's causing it, and. Uh, and um, maybe that's, and I hope that gets picked up with the tracing, but maybe it's not. And that would be interesting. Um, that'd be a whole nother thing to look at. Be really interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super interested in seeing what you find in the tracing because that would give us, a, I think, a much better picture as to like, you know, what is it in the work queue? Is it, is it retries or something else? Are we even getting the retries? I would bet if we don't see anything, I guess if we don't see anything in the tracing, then it's it's like all in this this retry and, and we probably aren't supporting retry and tracing and we probably mm -hmm. need to add it and I bet we could find something because yeah I mean yeah, that's that's really interesting though like it's like I I forget what happens in the retry I think if if we is it we just fail like during one of the steps and we just you know we send ourselves back to the queue and yes. it's a rate limiting queue so we just uh, whatever the time is that we have is the default rate limiting we wait and try again I mean eight retries though that's yeah, that's, that's probably that's probably most of your time. It's probably half that time is waiting in the rate limiting queue. That's interesting. I think someone wrote a, a request. Um, or had a Did you, are you done sharing, Marcelo? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you share again your screen? So I, I think I finished. Okay. Okay. So, but someone um, wrote a question here in the chat. So. Oh yeah, that that was me. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I was I was just piggybacking on uh, Ryan's point, as in if uh, on on the previous point that is uh, for the nineteen put request. Um, let's say let's say the ideal number is not nineteen, right? The ideal number is fifteen or or ten. 
uh, how much performance in improvement do we get if we bring that number down to uh, 50 or 10? Um, uh, th that was the question um, I had. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it will improve the overall thing, especially the throughput that we were saying. For latency, it's tricky, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not easy to say about latency because there are many queues going on, different components. And also, I don't know if the latency is coming from the put operation, might be. So, uh, it, but uh, it's, it's hard just to say without, you know, testing if we don't find it, but I, I, it definitely will improve the performance, at least for, I would say, throughput or, you know, um, or make the system uh, more, you know, say, I would say healthy, you know, doing less requests. Makes sense. Um, and then another question I had is when, when you were uh, showing those numbers uh, for, for the um, API server, right, that it has, a total quota of 500 requests that it can process, but it is only going up to uh, 40. Um, uh, so, sorry, I'm, I'm new to Kubeword, but um, Kubeword has its own aggregated API server, right? Uh, yes, just, yeah, the, the Virt API, it's the, the API that the, the client used to make, you know, uh, requests. For the for the cube view, I see. So this was against the actual cube API and not uh, the the board API. The the forty number. Yeah, it's the API yeah. server, the Kubernetes API. Yeah, this is the Kubernetes API. Okay, makes sense. Thanks for clear, clarifying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So um. I, so let me close this point. So Marcelo, um, I, here's the things I think will follow up that makes sense. We'll find, let's find the, the you know, the right defaults. Um, so like a, so good balance. Yeah, I, default. I put there, Whatever that so is. I got some feedbacks, you know, and uh, I defined like, uh, actually I put 200, 400. 200, 400, okay. Yeah. And again, just although it's it seems like very high, but you know 200 400 it's what the webhook uh, it's it's configured by default. you know for the it's our we already have some API that it's doing you know this amount of requests. you know well, not doing this amount of requests, but it's configuring to support this amount of requests. So I'm saying, it's not like a, a very insane value. So, and uh, the other thing is, uh, it's we, we, I ch I check it there. You know that it's not impacting too much the API server, so we're still like in a safe margin. And uh, yeah, so I forgot the third the, the other point that I was going to say, but I think just this, this is a good value. So uh, based on the experience that I did. So. Okay. And uh, well, yeah, I, okay. Someone wants to say? Yeah, sorry. Um, this is Ale again. Um, uh, we have so in the past, whenever I have done, whenever our team had done these kinds of performance, the guidance I have received from API server folks was that um, hundred uh, QPS and thousand burst could could be okay. Um, and, and it, maybe 200 and thousand bust is also okay. Uh, but, but that's the defaults that, uh, um, we were running our controllers with. Um, so uh, just, just wanted to give a data point. Oh, this is good. It's more or less aligned at what, uh, what, uh, I'm suggesting here. So, yeah. Ole, do you have like um, any issues that we can point to or like a mailing list thread that we can point to that talks about that or um, in case we can like just for additional evidence for like why we should go with a number like this? Uh, 
Um, I I would try to find find it. Um, the the best uh, I have is uh, QPS and uh, bus con configuration in in my repo. Uh, but um, I, I will try to find the discussion around it and send it over if that's okay. Yeah, I think it would be good to have just as an explanation for everyone to see in the, you know, because I think Marcel, you've got a good explanation. I think this would just add to it even more, like you know. You know, like Relay is doing this in his controller, and other people are doing this in their controllers, and this is what recognition for people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's just that's a solid point to say. Like, yeah, we should probably be we're we're very low. I think that would I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, if it's possible, I don't know how long you know this can be. You know, takes maybe to to merge that, or how much discussion do we need more? Um, but if we manage to get this next week, uh, I was planning maybe it might be interesting to present in the demo sections, the Kubvirt demo, uh, you know, about this improvement. So, um. yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, that, 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 that'd be cool. So, let's see, uh, let's go to the second point. So, document appropriate QPS based on performance scale requirements. I think this will be, we'll just need to. Um, I think like that's some of the stuff I have in that SLO document. We'll just need to refine that a little bit. I think eventually we'll just, we'll find a place for this, I guess, is the point. We'll just, because I think there's just, there's going to be a place where, you know, this is configurable. Um, this is valuable to document just because like, let's just say you only run VMIs, like, you know, it makes sense. Like you just want to give it as much access to the API server as possible. Like, you know, what's, you know, what is it, when, when should you expect to do that? I think those are like good questions that, um, you know, mm -hmm. good answers that we can provide to those questions. Yeah. I'll okay. And then last, to yeah. maybe like okay. write a blog post in the converts of, or somewhere and then. Okay. Yeah. yeah that sounds cool. Okay. Uh, and then last one, reduce the API request. This would be an awesome experiment to do just because I think we can get, just because of how, like, this is a small number, and if we reduce by one, we should see some massive improvement. So that would be cool if, we, if there's a way we could do this. I think I saw in the chat, um, where did um, um, IP rec, the number of put requests can be caused by conflicts. Yeah, we, we've seen this, uh, the number of put requests. We've seen a lot of conflicts. We've had some code around to improve this over time. Um, I don't know, Marcelo, you're, does your di is there any of your diagrams show the number of conflicts? Because it would be interesting to see if, uh, you know, we might be able to, we might be able to pinpoint like, like when we do the put requests, if that's why we're seeing, um, if the puts are having conflicts and that's maybe why we're getting retries or why it's requiring 19 on average, because we're just, you know, we're any of those things like, it could also have to do with the work queue. Could have to do a number of put requests. I think. Um, sorry, I just understand the question. So the in your in any of your diagrams, do you have um, the uh, the HTTP error codes for put requests? Like oh yes, see I have it. Kind of no, it's it's only it's all of these requests are two hundred uh, code. They're all two hundred. Okay, yeah. I checked that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so then I guess where we are at the 19. So anyway, it would be, it would be interesting to experiment reducing this. <laughs> you know, whatever, skipping one, I, I would be interesting to see. Maybe we can reduce this just a little bit. That'd be, mm -hmm. that could be a follow-up. Okay. Yeah, so um, just just to finalize, so again, if, if you agree and uh, you like the explanation, it will be very valuable if you write that in the PR. So so that we can, you know, um, you know, move on, you know, some people, some people can then also, you know, I, I'm waiting yeah. the David comment here, you know, but anyway, so uh, if, if you discuss, you know, if you agree with the numbers, things like that will be very valuable if you write here. You know? Yeah, well, so I'm going to, um... I'm going, so like, this is what I was saying. Like, to me, this seems like a bug. Let me take, I want to take what we've talked about here and I'll paste it in, into the, um, into the, as a comment, because I think like, just so we have all the follow-ups, but I think overall though, like to me, it seems okay. Like 200, 400 seems like, seems okay for balance. It just seems like we're too low. Like that, that might be a sane default. So I think I'll be on board with that. If that's, I, I don't remember where you are right now in your PR, but. To me, I think 200 to 
four hundred seems reasonable. Yeah, can you can you instead of whatever it is, twenty to thirty? Yeah, I think it's yeah, two hundred, four hundred, yeah. Yeah, and then we can work on some of this stuff like trying to improve like you know, when we're at that rate, let's try to improve the number of requests and like rate limited and stuff. I think yeah, I think exactly. it's a good start because it, that's this is one thing that I said also to David. So we you know, increasing that we are not hiding the problem. Actually, we are highlighting the problem. And, you know, yeah. you know, having a very low curves per second, that's where maybe we are hiding the problem. We don't see actually what's we we were not seeing the beginning, what's actually what's limiting us. We were not understanding that. So and it's definitely yeah. related to that. So our, our default right now is really 20 to 30. Is that what it yes. is? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's low. Okay, that's. I mean, that definitely has to be increased. I mean, if we're, I, I mean, to me, like the like the biggest convincing argument to me is like when I look at this, like I, like this just, I mean, like how long this is, like like how much time. I mean, you can see right there, and then and then it gets thinner and thinner, and then like when you look at these two, like it is kind of diminishing returns in some way. I mean, it's good to see like it gets faster, but it's, I mean, it's it's um. I mean, look how much better of an improvement between just these two. I mean, it's like a fourth of mm -hmm. the time you can just see it right there. I mean, it's that's passive. So, yeah, that yeah. There's another. This is a really good illustration. The distance between this line and this line is absolutely massive. I mean, that's such as that's just free speed that we can get with yeah, a simple improvement that just doesn't uh, start to be like some much. reasonable. You know, <laughs> it's from you know twenty two minutes. 30 minutes to create yeah, like the VMs, it's not, you know, acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the third one is we have 200, 400, yeah, which like, I, I mean, there's another jump in here like that halves it again. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll put, um, I'll write a comment on there. I think it makes sense to me. Okay, Thanks. let's go to the next one. So we have enough time to get through these. So um, you added VMI migration free phase ranges and times. This looks really exactly. cool. Exactly, yeah, we have, we have like this this metric for the VM creation, but we didn't we, we don't have it for the VM migration. I was trying out another experiment to understanding the performance of migration, and then nice. okay. then I implement that. It's basically very similar to what we have for VM, but for the VM migration object. Okay. Did you find any? What did you find in here? What's uh, anything interesting in the results? Anything like, um, stick out to you? Yeah, this is the latency. Um, it's I think it might be seconds. So it's you know migration might the the time that it migrates, uh, the whole time it depends you know of the size of the VM. But what we can see here, it's preparing the target. It took like uh, thirty six minutes to prepare the target. Um, with me. Oh, this is minutes. No, sorry, seconds. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. it's it's 30 seconds, more or less 36 seconds here, or more a little bit more than that. Um, I I think it this experiment was migrating 100 VMs um, from uh, from a node, and uh, and then I have like a very high configuration, like uh, I could migrate 20 parallel have 20 parallel migrations, and yeah, so I don't have like too, too big confusion on that yet, but uh, I'm saying here it's maybe, you know, get, I need to get the pod, maybe creation time, latency, that might be to about 20 seconds or 10 seconds actually, pod creation time. Um, and then 20 seconds to prepare the pod, but maybe uh, it's too much, is it? I don't know, I don't know. It's just like a few seconds, so I think we are fine to migrate with for the migration. I, I'm so I'm not I'm not that familiar with how the like what the expected times are, so it's hard for me to comment. But if you, I mean, maybe you have a, you probably have a better idea than I do. But it would also be interesting to hear from like I, I don't do you know who implemented this? It would be interesting to hear uh, to show them this, you know, like and see if the, this meets their expectation. I mean, that would just as another data point. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I don't know who did it, but um, I don't know. It would be interesting. I mean, I, I'm not like a, 
Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see just because, I mean, they've probably, maybe they've never seen this. I mean, they've probably done some migrations, but maybe they've never seen it in the way you're doing it, like with a hundred of them. Yeah, so in the, in the, Kubevert has some migration, uh, you know, metrics, but it's to count just like, a, you know, to count how many VMs were migrated, things like that. Maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's possible also to create a rate to see how many are being migrated at the same time. But maybe, for performance uh, maybe... regarding latency, there there was no metrics. I think it was the, maybe, the first maybe this is Maybe we're starting a mailing list thread on this because maybe we can kind of get some feedback from the people who want, who, you know, who like have some certain expectations around this um, to see like, you know, just to get a better idea. I mean, um, I, I don't know, like preparing the target 30. So this is like, this is an additive, right? Like this is like 36 seconds for this one. And then the red one, it took 38 seconds. And this isn't like, a, this is transition time. So this is between like it's from scheduling creation. and running, right? No, no, it's from creation to, um, it's it's not from the last phase, it's from the from creation. Oh, okay. So the, the, oh, so the way this, I see, I don't, see, I don't know how this works. Okay, so, so we go scheduling to schedule to preparing, tar, preparing target to target yeah. ready to In The time between to... those, yeah, the time Ending? between those bars it's the time between the phase. Well, so why is pending? Oh no, is it succeeded? It succeeded, yeah, when it was completed. Oh, okay. So pending is probably down here. Okay. Yeah, pending is probably. probably. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. So this is like the total time it took to do one migration. So it's like almost 39 seconds or so. Okay. Yeah. Nine, 95 percentile. So, yeah. Okay. It's interesting. It's kind of. It's flat like this. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think my recommendation, Marcelo, would be that post this, uh, post your data on the mailing list. Let's see what response we can get in terms of, I mean, I, I think this is very valuable in terms of like the idea, but it would be interesting also to get some feedback in terms of people think this should be faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. If you can also, you know, write some comment and review that. Yeah. Um, Sure. It will be good because we can speed up also this PR. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, let's see, do you uh, uh, validate performance? Let's see. Okay. Uh, next one. Let's go to. Uh, this PR. Okay. Um, so this one. Um, I, I think it makes sense to me, like overall what you have um, and here, I think Marcel, the only thing was. Um... Yeah, you, you were mentioned about refactoring some uh, some class. And then I mentioned that uh, I think we can, we can do maybe, you know, changing the way that the class are, maybe not the PR. I was pretty much yeah. trying to yeah, follow pardon. the way that you, you create that, so. Yeah, I think what um, made me realize like there's there's maybe another way to do this. Um, like there may be some improvements that we can make on the current structure. So yeah, I mean we can do this in another one. I think. Um, yeah, we I'm don't fine have, with that. I think like it's a long time that the performance job is not running anymore. So if we can yeah. move on with that, it will be better. So then we can improve, you know, the, the different you know, refactor that if we we want later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think overall what I saw there is fine. We'll just um, I, like I think it's fine to proceed. And so I'll put my plus one on there. We can get this out, and we'll do a refactor. It's like a. I think what we should do is like maybe as a follow up, we can have a discussion here in terms of like how we want some of these classes to look because um, I have an idea of like what they should be, but like um, I think there are some some like nuances for um, like you know how the like steady state should look and. Um, I just want to make sure we, we get those those APIs correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are, there are different ways to, to implement that. For example, instead of we have like a burst and steady state job, we can have only one. But in, inside, we can have like uh, you know uh, actions. So it means we will create, we will delete the object, we will wait between the deletion. And then we will generate like uh, you know the steady state, uh, and then it's only one kind of job, but 
depends how we configure the action. But anyway, we can discuss that later. And uh, if you can yeah. just write the comment there so that we can merge this PR as soon as possible, it's if you can do that, you know. Yeah, this, I'll give you I think a plus this is the most that, urgent think, one. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you a plus one. I think I'm okay with what's there and we can do as a follow up. I think what I'll do is I'll book some time in this meeting next week and we can discuss. Um, would you like just an overview of it and kind of get do some little bit of design, see how we can properly structure this. Um, just mm -hmm. so it makes sense, like make sure it's very clear what our interfaces are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last uh, is the so just look at the performance job results. So I made a change. We last week we talked about there's a um, there we one of the VMIs was stuck um, and didn't have enough memory. So I increased it. That merged. Um, I think I did it correctly. Like I. I mean, I did this. I didn't increase the cuverts allocated memory. I just did the um, the um, the clusters, jobs, yeah, mm -hmm. the clusters memory. Yeah, that's that's what it is. It's um, which so it's interesting. It's uh, actually it's it's interesting and might be alarm for us because that's what this kind of job that it, this kind of things that we want to see, isn't it? It means that the memory footprint increased the overhead. The VMI overhead increased, so yeah. this is definitely something that we should, you know, have a look at because yeah, it's, it's not it was it's working not ideal. yeah it was working fine for months you know or years you know read this job and now the memory is not enough so it maybe it might be an alarm for us. Yeah, I there's been a there was I think um, I forget who pointed out that the um, the issue um, or the minimum amount of VMI memory um, was increased, like the 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 buffer for uh, just so that the vert launcher processes can run, that was increased, and that we're starting to feel that effect. But I'm actually surprised because of how much and we're only launching 100 and we've already had to increase almost like almost like 10 gigs now and, and so it's it, it is a little it's surprising much, that we've had too to, much it, it's it's a, yeah it doesn't really add up actually so it's a bizarre but i so anyway that's what i did um because it should should have fixed this so i am still seeing a failure here so wait, what was the date of this let me just uh make sure i get mm. correct um, so this was yeah, we will go on. You need to merged, actually uh, nine days ago. You need to actually increase the cube memory because I think that that's the indicator on how much uh, the VM should have memory. Uh, the memory you increased should be only for the job, so it will not, for example, crash from the cluster and so on. But inside the job, the the, the VMs are created. Sorry, wait. Uh, um... Which memory do I need to increase? It's it's not this you're saying. It's the I think what we was saying is the VM um, memory allocation, not the the job Correct. memory because this this memory location here that uh, you change is the memory yeah. to create the cluster. So it will be like the node well the the no, node this, memory. This is, this is for the pod. The pod will be scheduled on our cluster and mm -hmm. inside the pod we are creating the vms and so the cube memory size is the indicator of how much memory each vm should get get so uh, right now you should see four vms with 10 gig and so if you want to increase the memory for the vm because you cannot schedule the vms that uh, like cube vms there you need to increase the parameter yeah, also the, Oh, so this is so the, I did the, this is the wrong one. The 10 gig this one. Yeah. Both Correct. because probably it's related. So but now you increase the, yes. the, the pod. It, you, is you... it is better to increase both because uh, okay. otherwise you can get killed by ON. Okay. Got it. Okay, so then that's that's probably why I'm getting some failures here. Okay, so this probably needs to be 12 or something then. Okay, that makes sense. I was getting suspicious as to like I did well, I did the right thing here. Okay, so that would explain this. Okay, that's probably explains all these. I, I think like 
I, I, I didn't go look through them, but I have a feeling that I'm going to find that there's there's still an um in here somewhere. Like it's not it's not going to work. Um, for what to have? Okay, so the, I'll increase this to twelve, and I think that that should that should fix this. Okay, I think so. We've done. I think we were originally eight. Is what we were. Oh, let me check the blame. I mean, I think we've gone up almost. Um, so it'll be like four gigs by the end of this. I think. Let me see what it was. But it's, it's still like something that we need to debug, isn't it? Why we need to increase that? Well, I think it's, um, I mean, Lubo, I think you were the one who pointed this out to me, that it was, um, it had to do with. Um... Yes, correct. We had a PR that uh, recalculated the uh, overhead, which is needed for the pot, uh, for the grid launch. Yeah, this one. Ah, uh, OK. Got it. Yeah, what was, do you remember, what was the exact number that it increased? Was it like 30 megs or something? I think that's what I recall per, yeah, per launcher. Something, something like yeah, okay. Okay, I missed this PR, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, we were, we, yeah, let's see. So we were originally like around, um, oh. No, this is what I had done previously. I think it was you, Marcelo. I think that did it, or I don't know if I can find it. Oh, the PR it doesn't you, matter. You click in some PR, yeah, increase the performance job memory. Yeah, I was just wondering where we started at because, oh, okay, so it was nine. Okay, so we went nine to 10, and then we're going to go to 10 to 12. Okay, so we're going to go up three gigs just to deal with this issue. Does that make sense? Because if we're 30, for 30 megs per VMI, that doesn't quite add up, right? That's, no, it does. That's three gigs, right? Yeah. Okay. Then that, that would add up. So it should be 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that, that should, okay. So then 12 should be the number. Okay. That makes sense. But keep in mind that that. Sorry, oh. Luba, you cut out there. Yeah. Sorry, the the memory will be multiplied by the number of nodes. Exactly. So, we, we have four. So, uh, so if you increase uh, it by one, then you have actually four gigabytes of memory because you have four VMs. So in the cluster, you will have four gigabytes more memory. Then how, then I don't follow this. Like we just increased it by four. So how is this not enough then? So then if I'm going if I'm going to 12, then we're then we're 12, we're increasing by 12 gigs. How like how we how I don't know how we wouldn't have enough for just four here. Maybe it's good to check the error again if it's still the memory so. What's that, Marcel? Maybe it's better to check the error again to see if it's still the memory. Well, I mean, at 10 gigs, it was like to 10 and 48, it still was. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it was, we, there was one out of 100 that wasn't. So, I mean, I guess maybe it should be 11. I mean, that's so that I mean, now we're raising it um, eight. But I mean, it's four should have been enough, right? Because it should have been roughly 30 or three gigs. This was about 30 megs of VM. I mean, I guess we were close. I mean, it was one VM short, right? So mm -hmm. I guess yeah. that's not Probably. too far off. Maybe it's maybe it's a bean packing problem. So maybe it depends yeah. on how they will land on the node. Yeah, okay. maybe so maybe it's, put eleven in. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it probably should be eleven then, just so that we don't. That's probably the most responsible thing to do here, or the more responsible thing to do here. So increase key memory size to eleven. Yeah, it's yeah. good if we put 11 also, we'll have some safe margin that if it increases again a little bit, it will be fine. Yeah. Okay. That works. All right. I think we're out of time, guys. You know, thanks, thanks for the discussion. All right. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.